Hello and welcome to this week's episode of The Shooting Show. On this week's episode, we've got a Corvid double bill. We head out with Stuart Eberol and Mark Ripley as they hope to nab themselves some marauding Corvids. But first we go to Bedford with Chris Dalton as he's got his eyes set on a Chinese water deer. So this week we're down at uh, Childers HQ, a good friend of mine, Paul Childerley, down in sunny Bedfordshire. Um, it's actually a, a, an extra trip. Normally we don't go down towards the end of the Chinese water deer season, but this year we've got, we've got two or three guys actually wanting to do some training um, on a, a sort of preparation for level two. And they're actually from the south of England, so it kind of coincided, it coincided with, with us being down there. So we flicked in for a few days just to really help Paul out with the, um, like I said, right at the end of his cull. It's slightly problematic because at that stage in the season, most of the younger animals are shot. So he's pretty much got what he, where he wants to be in terms of deer on the ground. So we're very specific about what we were and weren't to shoot, rightly so. I mean, he particularly wanted the big um, mature does leaving alone. Um, and also the, the the big books and any sort of reasonable quality sort of representative books coming through. So we're quite specifically looking at um, young books and and primarily young does. Um, so it's quite it can be quite hard to you know to to actually find them in and among uh, when there aren't many of them about. There's a lot of deer, but not so many of the cull animals. So it was quite tricky, but enjoyed it anyway. Yeah, one of the um, problems with stalking Chinese water deer is quite obvious over my shoulder. Uh, they're not overly worried about people, they're quite used to people walking around here, so they do tend to kind of stand and look. Um, but generally, once you start to get closer than 200 metres, they know very they know very well what 200 metres is and they'll be off. And then the other problem, of course, is backstop. So they'll lie out in the middle of the fields like that, watching. Um, and there's no way that you can, even if you could get close enough, you're faced with a situation like that with, with quite tricky to engineer backstops. But we, we, we're quite lucky here. There is quite a lot of undulation, so you've kind of almost got to get into a position where you're shooting down into a banking like this. Um, you know, where you can clearly see that, uh, you know, it's, it's safe. Um, but it's quite happily stood there watching us. It knows we can't shoot it. We'll move on a bit further and then it'll be off. Um, but there's a, some dead ground a bit beyond that, uh, where I think there's quite a few Chinese water deer laying out in the sunshine. It's quite a nice afternoon. So we'll just go and see if there's any shootable animals in there. I mean, I'm only looking for cull animals. We're not looking for any decent books, big books. Um, and we certainly don't want any mature females because it's quite late in the season. That one on the left. Yeah, it's quite a good animal. That. So it broken. broken tusk, and then it's a big on the left. Okay, we've got a, a big, real careful stalk in the open, and we've got a, two Chinese out here. There's a mature doe on the left hand side, but on the right hand side, uh, initially glancing at it, it looked as though it wasn't a very big buck. But the, the antlers actually, uh, the 
tooth has, uh, tusk has broken, uh, so it's kind of snapped off and it's really big on the other side, so quite a lot of people were class those as kind of unusual trophies, so that is not uh, a deer that would in any way be a cult book. In a lot of cases, like a roe with a damaged antler, we'd probably treat as a cult book, but these are actually quite sought after by people. Um, so that's one we're going to walk past and leave. I'm going to go down to the corner. There's a few Chinese water deer laid out in what was a cover crop. Um, I suspect they're probably going to be a mature animal as well, but we'll, we'll go down close and we'll have a look. The wind's quite tricky. It's swirling around a little bit. Okay, so a um, bit of a tricky one that way to do a bit of a loop round through the wood and then we crawled along the hedge just to get get into this sort of prone position. Um, 172 yards, it's, it's engineering a backstop, so we've got a nice backstop here. So I'm amazed that deer ran as far as it did actually because it's absolutely pissing blood out, pumping out, um, and it's just tumbled just just on the on the crest. You can actually see the great big puff of fur or it's good solid strike um, so the shot's good amazing for a small deer I mean 6.5 by 55 round this is lead um, surprising totally unaware totally relaxed feeding away just instinct flight instinct and it's just had enough to, to, to get going the shot's actually pulling some more Chinese water deer here in across the horizon. So I'm just going to let that settle down a minute, then I'm going to go and walk out and recover it. It's only just over the crest there. It's a lovely afternoon. So as always, I'd really like to thank the team of guys down there. Paul's got a real nice nice group of guys, the, the guides down there. Um, but particularly Sam was very helpful to us. Paul was awake and I left Sam to it. So he did a bit of running around for us. So thanks to Sam and particularly thanks to Paul Childerly for letting us out and about in the place. It's always, always a pleasure and it's a privilege really to be go onto somebody else's ground and be given you know relatively sort of free access to that. So that's nice. Um, so really just for the... Um, Carry the deer back into the into the larder, um, just process it, tag it up and, and job done. So I think pretty successful evening for us. I started South Asia Stalking to give people a chance to experience stalking and to reconnect to the outdoors. I felt this was something many people wanted to do but didn't know how to start the journey. This was almost 20 years ago and in a changing world I think it's time for some fresh ideas. Time for some new blood.
We look forward to seeing more from Chris, Stu and Rob in the next few months. But now we join Stuart Ebro as he heads out onto a local cattle farm with his trusty Beretta. He's hoping to stop the contamination the crows have been causing. Hi, I'm Stuart from Warwickshire Wild Game. Welcome to the shooting show. Today we are on a cattle farm in Warwickshire. Um, I look after the deer, foxes, rabbits, and also uh, try and help them out with the crows as well. Just behind us here, we've got a, a cattle fattening yard um, where they've, they've, they've got constant food out. The, the crows make a real mess of it. Uh, they get in it, they scrat it about so the cows can't get to it. They also uh, poo in it, which contaminates it. Um, for, um, for disease control, we try and stop it as much as possible. You're never going to completely stop it, but we try our hardest. We have um, we have whirlies out. We try and screen the sides. We hang, we shoot some crows and, and hang them out to try and deter them. Um, but you, you're never going to. And the only way to do it effectively is um, to try and dedicate a few days to to shooting them. So that's, uh, that's our plan today. We've set up a, a straw bale hide at the end of one of the feed passages and uh, we'll shoot them as they're trying to get into the shed. So you have to be, they're so switched on, you know, the slightest bit of movement and they're just gone. And with this wind at the minute, they just have to tilt the wing and they're miles where they, from where they just were. <coughs> so it's really important that we stay completely out of sight until the last moment. My bad. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> Thank you. 
we had a good couple of hours there. Um, show about 40, 45. I've got to go home and pick the rest up now. Um, like to stick at it a bit longer. They're still coming in, uh, but we've, we're stalking again this afternoon, so we're, um, we've got to cut it short. But I think we'll probably have another go next weekend. Um, just keep on top of them, keep keep them so it's not a nice place to be, and hopefully they'll go and find something else to feed on. Um, but yeah, no, fairly successful. I think the farm will be happy. Um, so yeah, good job done. Uh, Till the next time. From one type of crow control to another, we now join Mark Ripley as he heads out with his trusty air gun to a local patch of freshly planted maize. He's hoping that he can get the numbers down and after that he sets his sights on some rabbits before meeting a chance encounter. Now the farmers asked me if I would pop down and see if I could thin out some of the crows down here. Now um, he's currently planting his maize and the crows and especially the rooks will come down and pluck out the new shoots. So I had a little walk around yesterday and uh, he was right, there's an awful lot of crows around. Um, I've just uh, come down to this particular bit because I noticed there was a couple of rookeries. You'll see there's one just behind me here and there's one over the other side of the field there. And uh, I thought before I come down and really hit them hard with a shotgun, I thought I would uh, just do a little air gun video. So I've picked out a good place here, just in this fence line here. There's a little bit of cover. There's also quite a nice bank, which might make good rest for the rifle. It's about 50 meters from the tops of those trees, but um, I'm hoping that with the 0.25, I'll be able to stretch out that a little bit further and uh, knock one or two down. You also see there's quite a few holes in this bank here, so there's quite a few rabbits. So perhaps as the day draws on, we might get one or two bunnies out on the edge of the field here. Right, let's rig up a hide and see if we can knock one or two out of the trees here. So I've got a little bit of um, camo net just strung between a branch and a hide pole here. And uh, that seems to be enough because I'm actually tucked down behind this bank here. So I think I'm pretty well hidden. They're pretty sharp eyed crows though, don't miss much. Frustratingly, there's a few of them that have landed in the tree a little bit further down, but I purposely didn't set myself up near that one because although there were a few crows nesting in it, it's just started coming to leaf and uh, I wouldn't get a chance for a shot, I don't think. First one down. There's a couple more crows up there, but they've flown.
Well, it's gone a bit quiet down by the nest there, so I've decided I'll go and have a look down at the farmyard because I see there's a few crows I've been watching sailing over the barns there. Uh, so, yeah, I think that's going to be my next port of call. Yeah, I've still got plenty of air, good. And also, you'll notice I've swapped out the uh, trigger cam for the um, pard there because I forgot to charge the trigger cam and it's gone flat on me, so I've, luckily I had that with me in case I stayed on after dark um, so I'll just put that on and uh, get some um, some day footage with that right guess what it's about Well, it was certainly worth coming down to the farmyard anyway. It's two rooks I've just shot there in about two minutes. So, as opposed to um, about three hours to shoot two up in the trees back there. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I was just literally, I was just coming through the farmyard, come out the back there, and it's usually quite a good spot. You come out the farmyard, and they're so sort of used to the cattle and that moving around down there and people milling about. They don't take a lot of notice when they're out here. And there's a slurry pit just here, and uh, there was a crow come and landed just as I was walking out landing on one of the fence posts so I got down beyond the gate there whack that that was about 40 just over 40 meters um, so the pellet dropped a little bit low I didn't think it was quite as far as that I was just went straight at it the zero the rifles um, zero for 30 meters so it dropped a little bit but it was still enough to smack it in the back and knock it off the post and that was that one out of the way I walked up here and as I was walking up got about another 10-15 yards up this fence and there was one which must have been down in one of the tractor ruts and hadn't seen me and it just come up and was going in and out of the ruts and um, I just managed to get a shot into the back of that one as well and knock that over so that was two in quick succession all right let's go see what else we can find Sun's dropped now, so is the temperature. I think I'll um, head down to another farm and have a look for a few bunnies. Right, so. Uh, this little um, farm, or well, a small holding really, it's just a few small fields, but 
Uh, this field is the lambing field, there's a few sheep and lambs down that corner there. But I stood up here the other evening waiting for a fox and um, I noticed there's quite a few rabbits dotted around so I thought it'd be worth coming up and uh, having a little look at the air rifle, see if we can knock a few over. There's a couple just a little bit further up along the hedge row there. Um, I'll hang around in this corner and see if anything else comes out. If not, then I'll walk up and uh, see if I'll knock one or two of them over. Well, that was three just from this little tree line here all within about 20 yards of each other I saw a couple just here as I walked up and I stopped on the tree just there to rest my back elbow and to give me a bit more extra support and uh, knock those two over and then another one poked his head up and just hopped out over there I got that as well so uh, yes yeah, happy with that looks like it's only just a small field so um, I was quite surprised actually they hung around after the first sort of couple of shots but they're obviously not used to being uh, being shot too much up here so they'll soon wise up though <laughs> if they live long enough. Well that's just rounded the evening off perfect. I was just about to go and pick them rabbits up. I had a little look around to see if there was any more out of the thermal and I spotted a fox coming into the lambing field at the top here. It's only quite a small field this and I've stood out on a few occasions because uh, this this season we've had um, a few lambs taken so I have shot the fox that I think was doing the, doing the damage last week um, but any fox that comes into the lambing field is just a recipe for disaster so um, he came in, he was probably about 70 or 80 metres up the top there, which is a bit far even for a FAC air rifle, so I gave it a squeak and he came trotting in lovely, and he came into um, 50 metres, or just a couple of metres over, and he just gave me a perfect opportunity, looked slightly sideways, and I was able to put the pellet nicely between the eye and the ear there, which just switches them off. So that's um, rounding my even off a treat. I grab these rabbits and go and have a look and see if that was a dog or a vixen that we got over there.
Well, that was a little vixen, so three rabbits and a fox to the Brocock sniper. Well worth coming out. Right, well, I hope you've enjoyed the episode, and uh, as always, thanks for watching, and please subscribe. Sadly, that's all we've got time for on this week's episode of The Shooting Show. If you're not a member of Basque, make sure you join, and if you like what you've seen, make sure you like and subscribe. My name's Chris Castle, and this has been The Shooting Show. If you aren't a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you.